97 WABC. I'm especially proud that I served on our worst day. Hillary Clinton was there every step of the way. Within 48 hours of the towers falling, Hillary introduced a bill signed into law that helped first responders get the benefits they earned easier and faster. Then she pressured the EPA to launch a new task force and led congressional hearings until the EPA admitted that the air hadn't been safe. All right, there you have it for the folks that are constantly asking, what did Hillary Clinton do for New York? That is retired New York City police officer and detective Joe Sweeney. He spent 21 years with the police force here in New York. And, and you know, Bernard, I came in the next morning. I thought he stole the show that night. And that audio we just played, we played on our show the day after the DNC he appeared that night. That's right. Because I thought he was great. And we are fortunate to have one of New York City's finest, a true hero, Joe Sweeney, an old-time buddy, right in the studio. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Mr. Sweeney. Good morning, fellas. How, How you the doing? hell are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. You know, you served in uh, Midtown South. Yes. Uh, for, for how many years were you there? Uh, I was there about four, a little over four years in, yeah. the, in the squad. You were a detective, detective squad. Yeah. yeah, so you served with a friend of mine, actually. Yes. A guy named Brian Costello. Yes, sir. <laughs> My a, boy, Brian. He's a good man. He, he is off the hook. He's a good man. Yeah. Is, he he still with, is Brian still with the force? No, he retired no. himself. He okay. was also down. Uh, he, ser- he, he served uh, at Ground Zero for two months uh, following the tragedy. Gotcha. And uh, suffered actually from it. Suffered some, yep. uh, and he retired on disability. Yeah, but uh, yeah, he was down there pulling. Uh, he was finding bodies, and he also was out in Staten Island in, at the where they were they were they were dumping the uh, trash fresh kills. Yeah, and uh, you know it was a horrible experience for him. No, but. it was tough, and 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 Brian and you know thousands of other guys and and girls, uh, you know, who are from the NYPD and and the fire department and all all kinds of other first responding agencies, volunteers and 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 you know people like that. Um, they all have similar stories, you know. Unfortunately yeah. for me, I was fine. Uh, Brian's somebody who was uh, you know suffered some kind of illness yeah. or injury from that. He's doing well, but yeah. uh, he he did go through that. It was traumatic also. I know he's a tough guy and he holds it, he keeps it in, but uh, we we knew he was working like uh, around the clock down there. And uh, anyway, he's okay, but he's a tough guy, Brian Costello. And one, he told, I can't even tell us, tell you the stories that he told us about his time on the job, but the one that stands out. These are out, all hypothetical right, stories. Right, no, this, these this, are, you know, this what, is, he has what, a vivid filled, imagination. Filled with exaggeration. Listen, let me just say this yes. one. This is no exaggeration. He's a tough, tough guy. He's a tough cop, the kind of cop you want out there. Oh, yeah. Anyway, he told us one, one time he came home. He's a detective, so he wore a suit like yourself. He came home after a, a vicious uh, fight with a perp. How he, they were apprehending a perp. And his his wife found teeth in the cuffs of his pants. Yeah, you're kidding. <laughs> Somebody's yeah. teeth. Oh, my God. Yeah. That is a good story. Yes. <laughs> I, I mean, I could tell you a million others, but I don't think he'd want me to. No, no probably not. He's but, got uh, the same stories, probably. <laughs> well, good for Brian Costello. But before we get into uh, the cops, why you were on Bill O'Reilly last week, Bernard is on every week. In fact, he's on tonight. Going back to what you said at the DNC, because obviously the Trump supporters uh, like to bash Hillary. They say, what did she do when she was working in New York? And you made it very clear that after 9-11, Trump, uh, his contention was his guys were down there helping with the wreckage. He was there. And uh, it turns out you said the night that Hillary was the one who made sure New York got money afterwards for the guys that were suffering. And you also made the point that night that Donald Trump made money off of 9-11 when, in fact, he said one of his buildings was damaged is that what you said well i didn't say that but but that was uh that was uh the guy who followed me oh that's uh, right because you you, joe, you introduced lauren yeah, manning joe, that's joe right. crowley who's right joe uh, crowley uh, right uh, a congressman, congressman from queens, from queens right. yeah right. he 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 had uh said that and and i knew that to be true but um well I, now he is a businessman to be uh to be fair, so and she was a politician who would uh, n- naturally try to help out the city. I mean, he would his, his job was to make money. Yeah, and in fairness, he wasn't alone. But what what they did was they they applied for for a grant that would would have been um, c- considered a small business grant, which, in the technical sense of the term, what he what he should have applied for, he he didn't qualify for, and that and that was the issue. Um, he 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 filed under like. If, as if you were a manufacturer, so that you have, if anything, if you're a manufacturer, if you have less than 500 employees, you're a, considered a small business. 
Right. So, okay, okay. so he, that, okay. But forget about him, what he did or didn't yeah. do. But your contention is, is that Hillary Clinton did, in fact, do a lot for yeah. New York after 9-11. Yeah, I mean, you know, aside from the, the funding aside, me personally, and I remember this, you know, I, I still have these feelings of when we were down there and, and you know, uh, people like Brian and myself and, you know, you're, you're down at Ground Zero, you're out at the landfill. But certainly right after... Uh, the attacks in the months following down at Ground Zero, you could tell the air wasn't right. And and yet uh, the administration who was in power at the time was telling us that the EPA had tested it and, and the uh, tests were fine. And, and, and she was – and I remember her being one of the first people to stand up and say, wait a minute, this this doesn't seem right, and, and kind of pushing the issue and, and having them – Later, admitting that the tests were uh, weren't correct. Christine Todd Whitman was one of the uh, one of the people yeah. who, were, who were saying, "Yeah, don't worry about it. Go down there yes. and, yeah. and and others." And I think the, she just actually just apologized for that. I mean, recently, yeah, yeah, about what fourteen years uh, later. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, oh, she's you know, right. and first, but let me just push back slightly on on Hillary Clinton and what she did was great for for New York, but it was almost a gimme. I mean, Peter King was part of that, and uh, it was a gimme. And as far as introducing legislation, Joe, I have to say that she introduced three pieces of legislation. And the three of them were, one was a bill to, uh, uh, to, to name a portion of a highway after Tim Russert. Another was to uh, name a park. And the last one was called the uh, Cape Mullaney National Historic Site. So I'm not sure which bill she introduced the, to, to get money. But uh, according to the records there, she didn't int- introduce any bill that, uh, that succeeded along those lines. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. I mean, I know I was I'm under the impression that she was part of the uh, legislation that led to the to the funding for this. And I'm sure she wasn't alone either. I'm sure there was like Peter sure. King and I'm sure there's other politicians that were involved in that as well. Um, but, you know, and again, for me, it's more about the the air quality. And um, but I do believe that that. Uh, she was fighting for us. I got that feeling that at the time, too. So. Okay, let me push back one more time. Sid, if you don't mind, if I could. You, you, I, I let you push back twice. I haven't said a word, have I? Yeah. You're trying to ruin it for the poor bastard. No, 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 he was I, down listen, there a hero no, when you're trying to take no, it away I am from him. Not. He's, he's, he's a Hillary supporter, so he, maybe he can clear this up. I, want, I, I will give him an opportunity to clear things by up. By the way, I'm not sure he's a Hillary supporter. I, I forgot supporter. you were here, by the way. Yeah, I know. For, exactly. <laughs> go ahead. Go well, ahead. Here, how about this? Hillary Clinton uh, demonizes cops. Uh, she also is. She marches with uh, a cop hating uh, a creep like an ass clown Al Sharpton. I mean, I mean, isn't that a problem? T- tell us how you really feel. But is, <laughs> isn't, isn't that not a problem? Though? Seriously. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. And, uh, you know, my feeling is I think well, before you go any further. Yeah. Do you feel that way? No, I don't. OK, fine. I don't. There you go. Um, you don't feel that she marches with Al Sharpton and hangs out with him and uh, says that there's intrinsic racism on the part of the police. I mean, you know, Al has has inserted himself into a lot of places. So I, I get that. And, and, but my, my feeling of all of this is that, you know, in order to solve these issues, we have to have the whole community get involved. And, and I think she's done a, a, a better job at, you know, when she met with the police uh, leaders here in New York in, in the things that she said, she needs to include everybody in, in trying to come up with a solution. And I don't think that, um, you know, dividing whether it, and you may not like Al Sharpton, I'm not using him as an example. No, as, I, I as love a commu- Al Sharpton. I'm not using him as <laughs> as the leader of the of right. any particular community. Yeah. But you need to go into these communities and and work together with the police, with the people who live there, and the police departments themselves have to be engaged in the, in the in their environment. They have to be engaged in the community. They can't be seen as an occupying army. They have to work together. That's the only way these things are going to be solved. I, who would disagree with that? So, so see, because she's never come out and said the things that she's been – she doesn't say, I hate the police, the police are bad, it's all about the victims. But because she doesn't necessarily side with the police all the time or because she puts a woman like Michael Brown's mother on stage, it's easy to attack her. But what you're saying is she's looking at the bigger picture. Yeah. She's looking at – listen – I love the cops, but there's an issue, and the only way to get past this issue is to bring it up and not necessarily jump on one side and not the other. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, so... And, and, and <laughs> Very I, rational. <laughs> go, go ahead, go ahead Yeah, no, I, so. I believe in that. And, and I was at a community uh, meeting over the summer where um, we had some police officers and some uh, people from the community just to talk about the issues that were on TV, these riots and Black Lives Matter and why, and the police shootings and, and what, how can we get together and 
try and figure out a way forward. And some of the stories that I heard from some of the African American people who had who had grown up down south and or had some issues even ongoing in their life now, and, and the pain that they felt was so real that you know I you have to under, I had to take a step back and go wow this is where they're coming from when they when they approach some of these issues and I'm not saying it's right or wrong but I think we have to bridge that gap to to understand each other and then move forward from there all right that's reasonable listen when, when she says uh, that the p- police are guilty of intrinsic racism though that to me and she says that right after a shooting before we know the facts before the facts come out that seems to me she's pandering and uh, it, it, it's, it's demonizing police at a, at a, at a certain time and that eventually it has to, uh, perpetuates the Ferguson effect which when the cops are demonized they're afraid to go into uh, cities they were afraid to be proactive and that leads to more crime in the inner cities and the people in the inner cities actually get hurt by what she said do you believe that that's true what he just said well I, I I believe the that that those are issues I don't believe first of all I never heard her say that the the police are intrinsically racist there there are she has well I've never heard her say that but there are we all come with our own baggage to whatever job we do so that's what I'm that's what I mean where we have to step inside somebody else's shoes and kind of understand them in order to do and that and that's the one thing about policing going forward I think you know we've made tr- police in America is probably the best in the world so and in New York City I'm very proud of the police uh, department and I was there in a time when we made tremendous strides you know going from from the 80s uh, to to the what we see today, and I definitely don't want to take steps backwards for sure, but we do need to change, and that's the one thing police departments are reluctant to do when they have success in, in right. cleaning up the streets. Right. They they don't adjust well because nobody wants to step up and say, hey, wait a minute, we need to we need to kind of change the way we're doing things here, and I think that's where, from what I hear her say, that's where we need to go. That's why she's pledged. Uh, you know, money to training, which I think is going to be crucial to, to fixing some of these issues. Um, you know, some of these police departments may not be trained in the same way larger ones are. I, you know, I can't speak to that, but, but I think that's going to be a, a key part of, of, of going forward. And, um, you know, it, it's important to focus on that. And, and, at, and at the very least, she's got this in mind as a solution. You know, last week when you were on O'Reilly, uh, you thought it was interesting. Bernard, again, is on O'Reilly tonight. You're on with uh, Sheriff Clark, who yeah. is the uh, hero amongst the Trump supporters. This is the guy that should have replaced Bill Bratton. Um, he was asked a question. Great guy. Great guy. Love yeah, him. no, and I'm, I'm, you know, very impressed with him, and I have a lot of respect for him. I've seen him many times on the show, and, and uh, you know, a little intimidating, to be honest with right. you, that I, that I was up against him. Yeah, right. But, but as impressed as you are, and we all are, he seems like a great guy. Um, he was asked a question on that program, and, yeah, so we and, were both, and the answer you seemed a little... Yeah, we were both asked, you know, I was asked, why, why do I think, and I've never, by the way, the first time I ever, first time I was on, on a radio show today, first time I was on a television show. And you're doing great. You're so doing great. Fantastic. <laughs> so, it, it, you, it ain't rocket science, no, as you can uh, tell. And he spoke at the DNC, so you, you know, yeah, you, you, yeah. you've had the big crowds in front of you. Yeah, well, you know, I, and, and, I, and I was able to muscle through it, but, but, uh, <laughs> but going on, going, the first, my first TV, you know, experience experience was right in the lion's den, Bill O'Reilly, you know, uh, and going against Sheriff Clark. Yeah. But he asked us both. He asked me, what, why do I think Hillary would be better president for police? And I gave him basically the same answer I just gave you about training and, and moving forward and kind of bringing people together. And then uh, he's like, pick one thing. So he asked Sheriff Clark, who's done this a million times, pick one thing. And his answer was, well, Donald Trump has shined the light on the problem. Well, what? I mean, come on, man. You know, like, seriously. Like, he's been a supporter of him for a long time. He's in the police business. He doesn't have a better answer than he shined a light on a problem. You you turn the news on, you see, you know, well, police shootings, you see riots, you see all these things happening. The light is on, man. You know, it wasn't yeah. Donald that did that. All right, but, I mean, I guess it's it's more than just the police. It's uh, cultural, uh, sociological uh, problems within the inner city. I, I get I get what his answer was, and, 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 and that it, places like Chicago, the murder rate is up and all these right. things. But I, I don't think it was Donald that shined the light on that. I no. mean, I think that's no. something people have been talking about for a while. Uh, well, you got to take that up with Sheriff Clark. <laughs> no, I'm just, hey, hey, listen, I, 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 I don't want answer, to. Sweetie. I don't want nah, to, by on. the way. <laughs> you listen, can take him. <laughs> uh, listen, first of all, we're out of time. But Joe Sweeney, uh, we have to break. Where did you grow up, by the way? Uh, actually, I, I, I lived in Long Island for a little bit, and then I moved upstate.
I uh, lived in Island Park. Next, Island next, Park? Yeah. Okay, next yeah. to Long Beach. Well, yeah. Brian Costello won't be talking to you anymore. No, he's not. <laughs> Hefty knows you're a Hillary I, supporter. I, I, told, I said to Sid when you walked out, I said, he is, he is not going to be happy with me. <laughs> uh, anyway, And he's I, a big guy, so I, I have to duck him and Sheriff He Clark. is a big guy. Former <laughs> NYPD uh, hero cop down at 9-11, uh, Joe Sweeney. He's working at the Democratic National Committee. On behalf of Hillary Clinton, on the Bernie and Sid Show, thanks for, for coming in. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Right, appreciate it. There he is. Back on Bernie and Sid after this.